by making w uh, large. So small w means a sharp edge, large w means a smooth edge. Yeah, the W is measured in units of magnetic length. It's actually, I'll be using W by L. And this is something which can be done experimentally because since, at least for the two decks, uh, the it's all done by gating. They can gate this, this thing so that they can make a smooth edge or a sharp edge. What one finds is that uh, there are changes in the edge due to the change in confining uh, changes in the edge due to the change in confining potential and electron electron interactions have been studied earlier first by Shimon and Wen in 1994 and what they found is for that for nu is equal to 1 for once fill Landau level if you soften the edge it leads to a phase transition where the electrons deposit away from the bulk and instead of one edge you are actually left with three edges these are three edges. This is in the Hartree fork. This is actually by doing an exact computation. The, I, the reason being that the electron, this is the background charge, positive charge density, and the electron density tries to mimic that and uh, min minimize the electrostatic energy while, uh, while it still had to satisfy the Hartree fork requirement of keeping the occupations of 0 or 1. Or in other words, <coughs> what? This is a in a finite system. Yeah. yeah. Which, which calculation? The right one. Yeah. They exact diagonalize it in a small system. In a small system, and this is using a Hartree fork. So. The aim is that somehow the system wants to minimize the electrostatic energy by mimicking the background density. This was also done by for nu is equal to 2. They made the edge smoother and then the two edges try to minimize the background density by moving away from each other. So, you have different edges for the up spin and for the down spin. So, this is the way it tries to minimize its energy. So, the aim, so you get a, actually a sizable separation between the edge states of opposite spins. The aim is again to minimize the electrostatic energy. So, the point I want to make is that in both these cases, depending on whether the potential at the edge of the quantum hall sample is smooth or sharp, the number and position of the quantum hall edge states can be changed. And this is something which is called edge reconstruction and has been seen experimentally as well. So, I, sorry, I can't hear. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. There are two edges because uh, nu is equal to 2 means 0 up and 0 down are filled. The lowest Landau level is filled, oh. right? But I thought earlier you showed that uh, you would prefer to fill uh, 0 up and then 1 up. That is, uh, that is only if the Coulomb energy is above a certain this this thing. Case. Yeah, this is not the case, right? Those things depend on details of the how large your Coulomb energy is. Yeah. This is when Coulomb interaction is small enough, it will still prefer to do this. So, essentially this is due to the fact that the state lowers its energy at the edge by reconstructing the Landau levels, so as to spread out the charge density to follow the background density. With this let me come to what we have tried to do and what the question that we asked is whether you can also have something similar called spin reconstruction. So, both of these were examples of charge reconstruction and involved re reorganization of the charge density. The question we asked if there are multiple edge modes with the same spin, then is there an. Excuse me. What is the experimental signature one would see such a The edge, uh, this thing. Um, I think in, in 
the place where they do these kinds of experiments is in High Bloom's exp uh, uh, experiments in Weizmann, and they have a way of actually contacting individual edges. I mean, I don't know how it's done, and they say that they they can contact individual edges and see how much current is carried by them. They have done this, I think, <coughs> for integer quantum Hall effect as well as a fractional quantum Hall effect, where for even for one third they have one edge going this way, they have another edge going the other way, they have neutral modes. I don't exactly know how they uh, uh, measure them, but I know that they they have ways of contacting them individually. And uh, for what we do, I, the, here I will give some experimental kind of, uh, I will uh, in the end explain some kind of uh, experimental scenarios where we can uh, suggest how you would look for some of the things that we are suggesting. Uh, yeah. What I wanted to, what the question that we are asking now is that if there are multiple edge modes with the same spin, then is there an exchange driven uh, rearrangement possible? And the simplest case here is to have nu is equal to 3, because then you will have at least two modes with the same spin. So, uh, basically if the uh, chemical potential we fix at a place where you have 0 up, 0 down and 1 up. And uh, the, for very sharp edges, the three modes will be very close to each other. But as you make the potential smoother, they move away from each other. And at some point, they are far enough apart, so that they can gain energy by having two like spins close to each other. Either these two will switch, or these two the, will switch, so that you have two like spins close to each other. That turns out to be the lowest energy ground state. So, this is what we mean over here. We have just the spins are switching as a function of the, uh, this is the guiding center. The, 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 okay. So, uh, the rest of the talk I will try to explain a little better what, uh, how one gets this spin switching and then I will uh, also try to give some experimental scenarios where this can be measured. Yeah. No, no, not when they are far apart. Uh, they At some point they are far enough. Meaning, okay. Uh, if they are all sitting on top of each other, I think the gain in energy will not, it does not make that much of a difference. So, if they are all on top, they share some space that you would like. No, I will I'll show you. Uh, this I will show in detail how, how it comes about, because uh, how, what the phase diagram looks like. It turns out that as you increase the smoothness, then at some point it chooses to flip. Because you want to have this, okay, the reason being that you want to actually have it mimic the background density. If the back, right? So that is the reason that you need to falling very it, when it falls very rapidly, there is nothing much it can do but sit there. If you make it smooth, it wants to follow that. <coughs> So, uh, the basic setup that we have is, uh, okay, we consider the quantum Hall effect on a cylinder in the sense that we take periodic boundary condition in the x directions and our bulk Hamiltonian consists of uh, the kinetic energy part, the Coulomb repulsion part with V q is to, this is just the Coulomb uh, of Fourier transform of the Coulomb energy term and q naught is the screening length which is 0 actually for pure Coulomb, but in the numerical computations, you put in a small value. And do you broaden your state with some disorder or no? What? The states that if you have a disorder term which gives you a, some broad. No, no, we do not have disorder. We do not include disorder at all. Yeah. The edge is modeled by a background charge density like this, which generates the edge or confining potential through Coulomb interactions with the there is a background density and the electron density. So, this is how we model the edge. 
And what we do is a mean field or a Hartree-Fock calculation. We assume that the ground state has translational invariance in the x direction, so that k is a good quantum number. And the interaction term is decoupled by taking all possible averages and replaced by the one body Hamiltonian. And we allow for Landau level mixing and for spin non-conservation. So at a given guiding center, all the states are allowed to mix. And uh, we compute the Hartree and Fock potentials self-consistently. The Hartree potential is the same for spin up and spin down. The Fock potential is what arises due to exchange and uh, uh, it actually favors, it's what is giving you the ferromagnetic uh, ground state. So again, I'll show the results and I'll explain the various features of this in the next few slides. Which one? The screening length or inverse screening length? is a parameter that we choose. Yeah, Q0. So here what we have is the Coulomb energy in units of the cyclotron energy, E c by omega c. And here you have this small w is essentially the width of the over which it falls in units of the magnetic length, right. This is the length over which the edge potential falls to 0. We have, within our system we have two bulk states. I had said that at some value of 2.5 something there was a bulk transition from 0 up, 0 down, 1 up to 0 up, 1 up, 2 up. Right? This is the unpolarized ground state, this is the polarized ground state. Most of what we will do is in this region, but so this is the, this will be the one above. What we, now we look at the edge phases and I am claiming that there are three edge phases, phase A, phase B and phase C. Okay? So as I said in the bulk phases, uh, we j basically uh, there is a bulk phase transition from psi 1 to psi 2. Psi 1 is 0 up, 0 down, 1 up and psi 2 is 0 up, 1 up, 2 up. So that happens at this phase and this is just some technicalities of how we get that bulk phases. And at, uh, okay, yeah, for analytic, it can even be done analytically for Q0 equal to 0 and for the numerical values we took Q0 L is equal to 0 0.01 and then there is only a very small change from 2.52 to 2.534. And uh, now what we do is, uh, we also have said we will do spin unrestricted Hartree Fock, which basically means that the modes, edge modes can, uh, can no longer be uh, labeled by spin. So we will have to call the three modes as outer, middle and inner. In the bulk actually there is no real spin mixing. So in the bulk, the white region has 0 up, middle is 0 down. 1 uh, inner is 1 up, in the bulk the blue region has 0 up, 1 up, 2 down as I already said, 0 up, 1 up, 2 up. But now we want to understand what happens at the edge and close to the edge translational invariance in the y direction of course is broken and so different values of k the guiding centers will mix and different Landau levels will also mix to lower the energy and one has to find out self consistent ground states by iteration. What you find is that for low coulomb and small omega, the bulk picture continues and you continue to have 0 up, 0 down, 1 up, right. For if the coulomb interaction is not very high and that this thing is sharp, right. And the spin character and if you, we, we also plotted explicitly the spin character of this states. The spin of the outer and inner remains up, the spin of the middle remains down. So what we plotted plotting here is spin versus the guiding centers. But as the softness of the edge potential increases, one will go to either phase B or C, right. For when the Coulomb interaction is below this, you go to phase from phase A to phase B as you soften it and when you the Coulomb interaction is above this level, you go from phase A to phase C. depending on the value of the Coulomb potential. So for 1.5 is less than E c by omega is less than 
and for this value, what you find is that the spin of the outer and middle modes exchange after an avoided crossing. So, you find that uh, if you pl plot the spins, the spin of the outer mode and the middle mode have exchanged. The spin of the in this one remains the same, but these two exchange after an avoided crossing just around the Fermi level. 0 is the Fermi level. And so, after switching in phase B, the spin ordering of the modes is given by down up up. So, the two up spins have come close to each other and we are interpreting that as that they are gaining exchange energy by having the two spin modes close to each other. Similarly, in the other region from 2.13 to 2.5 and again by when you make the width large enough, the spin of the inner and middle modes change, the outer one remains the same. So, the red and blue here have switched. If you look at the spin character at exactly at the chemical potential, it changes abruptly at the tra transition. Here the inner and middle mo uh, modes and here are the outer and middle modes. So, phase A to phase C or phase A to phase B. So, these are the phases that we are talking about. And an important point to note here is that the ch charge density does not vary uh, appreciably across the transition. So, if you look at the charge density that remains the same in the phase A and phase B, it is only the spins which are switching. So, this is very unlike the charge reconstruction that people talked about earlier. So, uh, in fact, charge reconstruction they had also talked about much going to much larger w's. In fact, it was much above this and in our case also it perhaps will occur, but it will be at much larger w's. So, the spin mode switching occurs before charge mode switching. So, um, we have checked that this uh, rob the spin mode switching is robust to changes in the form and range of the Coulomb interaction.